Hey everybody, how's it going? I um, wanted to welcome you to Fitness Friday. Got my, my best friend here, Chad Blake, our head coach. Uh, he's gonna talk to us a little bit about stress today. So Chad, tell me why are we talking about stress? Uh, <laughs> it's a big topic, yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, we're talking about stress because the holidays are coming up and we both in our careers in fitness have seen so many people sabotage themselves with stress. So many times, think people, e even with good intentions, they add things to their programs that uh, result in too much stress, and just stress can kind of kill the holidays. So, okay. so I know a lot of our, our viewers are guys, and, and as guys, I mean we're we're manly, yeah. we're tough, right? right. And so we don't often like to admit that we're stressed out or that things bother us. So, um, you know, talk to me a little bit about that. Again, huge topic, but basically just. Stress in your life doesn't make you weak. Um, you know, it's just it's a uh, situation that happens to us. But it just it's good to acknowledge sometimes when there is actual stress. You know, trying to like manage things and mitigate things doesn't make you weaker. Um, you have to plan for things. So uh, even you know we talk about those all the time when there was a lot of stress. We said, talk about a lot is, you know, if you don't take care of yourself, you can take care of other people. And that, that kind of comes into that subject where yeah. if, you, if you can't recognize that you're not taking care of yourself, your ability to do everything else is going to diminish. Yeah. So sometimes recognizing there's stress is the first step to making everything else better. Yeah, and it doesn't mean that you're, you're just stressed physically, right? Yeah. Like, because you have a mind, a body, and a spirit, and you get stressed in all three of those areas, and then they all manifest in a physical form some way, right? Absolutely. And so one of those things is cortisol. Yeah. Um, tell me what, what is cortisol and why is it like almost a sin? So <laughs> I'm actually glad you put it that way because yeah. there's, there's, a, there's a tendency when we hear like what I'm about to explain to think, okay, that's a bad thing. Cortisol isn't a bad hormone either. It's, it's important. Uh, just like cholesterol, we need cholesterol. Um, but it's when it gets out of control, it could definitely cause problems. So what we need is for cortisol levels to be in optimal ranges. Um, and um, like I talked about in the blog, like cortisol is supposed to be elevated in the morning. It's supposed to be kind of lower in the evening. When we're stressed all the time, cortisol tends to be high all the time. And if it's high all the time, it causes just a cascade of problems from okay. like uh, blood sugar issues and insulin problems to storing body fat too much. Okay. So I'm, I'm a person and I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get lean and I'm, I'm doing the things, I'm doing the diet, I'm doing the workout, I'm not seeing any results, I kind of start to realize, I listen to this and I read your blog and I kind of start to realize that, hey, maybe I'm stressed out. And so my initial reaction is, well, I need to go do another hour on cardio every day, like, or I need to do another fitness class or I need to um, put in more sets and reps in my workout. Tell me why that's almost a... Uh, times when working out a lot can be good but typically those times need to be structured and kind of short meaning like when I work with professional athletes we might do a lot for a few weeks but then we'll also taper um, and there's a lot of ways we'll manage that but if you introduce a stressor like exercise the body has a limited ability to deal with that um, and you have to keep your, your cortisol levels want to kind of balance out with your testosterone levels whether you're male or female and um, once you start exercising, you start to produce cortisol. If your cortisol levels sort of outwork your testosterone levels, you are not going to see any progress. You're going to see it's going to be easier to gain fat. Um, you won't lose any fat. You might even lose muscle. So. Yeah, it kind of does that inverse of where your cortisol and your adrenals increase and your testosterone and your thyroid kind of decrease. Yeah. Um, and then you're just spinning your wheels. Yes. Right? Like you, you're working harder and harder and harder and not getting anywhere. And it gets really, really frustrating. Absolutely. So what are what are one or two things that we can take away of how can we reinforce this and get back to where our cortisol and our adrenals kind of go? 
go back to where they need to be in our testosterone and our thyroid and start coming back up. Reversing the cycle can be really hard and uh, it's something that can require blood work, honestly. But, um, some simple things that you can keep in mind, keep your workouts, like the actual workout after you've done for about 45 minutes or less. actual workout to 45 minutes or less after the warm-up is done and then uh, don't go for super long periods without eating food uh, if you uh, and de definitely don't like work out and then just go back to work or something uh, I was telling Sam earlier today uh, I used to work at a gym in downtown Fort Worth and uh, most of the members would just come in and work out uh, and then they would go back to work because it was downtown. Um, and one of our receptionists, after she'd been there for a year, she noticed that almost none of the members were making any progress at all. And it was because all they were doing was stressing them. They're just adding to their stress, you know. Um, so they weren't. Re and uh, again, if you're not super gifted, recovery is the thing that you have to kind of really strategize and plan for and, and think about more than the stimulus. So. It's that recovery is what's missing. Yeah, and so t tell me the story you, you were talking about earlier, the story about the uh, aerobic instructors. Yeah, so <clears throat> when I got started in the fitness business 20 years ago, Everett Auberg at a seminar was talking about a study that was done over a, a period of five years on aerobics instructors, and they found 20 years ago there was a big division between like weightlifting and cardio and aerobics. Like, pretty much needed one or the other. Most people did both. Uh, but they found over a period of five years that these, this group of aerobics instructors, their body fat actually went up over a five year period. And that was attributed to higher cortisol levels because <clears throat> every time they would go and teach a class, they're producing cortisol. If they're just kind of running around class to class and not recovering properly, they're, they're not gonna lose fat. Their body fat's just gonna gradually go up. So this is a question um, really specifically for Samantha, my wife, um, who's videotaping us right now. So is there, and in her group that she does, but is there a connection in between stress and cortisol and inflammation levels? Oh my, yeah. Oh, God, huge topic. It's, <laughs> where to start with that? Just uh, keep it brief. I mean, so yeah. there is a connection. Yeah, there's definitely a connection. And so the, the more you stress, the more cortisol you have, the more your inflammation is well, okay, so I, I like to take things, I like to look at things from a survival standpoint, just because that's my background. So, if you, you know, we give the body signals, the body adapts to the signal that we give it. If you are giving your body the signal that you're like stressed out all the time, you, your nervous system is going to take that to mean that you're either in like a war zone or that there's like a, a shortage of resources in the area, shortage of resources in the area, or in like a more primitive thing that might mean that like, your tribe wasn't getting on with the next tribe, but maybe the creek was running dry. Uh, that might sound kind of strange, but we're really designed for that type of thing. We're not designed for leaving this meeting and going to McDonald's and forging. Um, so if we're telling our bodies all the time that there's stress, it, it's going to respond to that by wanting to hang on to fat because it's, it thinks that you need it. Um, so we, we can talk about that forever. But it's, body fat in, it, in itself is inflammatory. So when our body fat's higher, our inflammation's gonna be higher. Um, there's just a lot of cascading things. That... Well, if you guys have any more questions, um, Chad goes over this in a deep dive in our blog. Um, I put the link in the description, so make sure you click on that. If you wanna know some more about this, he goes on a really deep dive there. You can learn more. You can even get the opportunity to talk with them a little bit about this if you want to. You can comment. Um, like this, uh, message us individually if you want to. Do you have anything else you want to say on stress before we let it go? More is not better. So, you know, when you're thinking about exercise and stuff, sometimes if you're looking at like, okay, I'm going to get in shape this year, whatever it is, sometimes you have to take things out before you add things in. You know, so like, don't, don't always think about like adding, adding, adding. We've, we've, we've seen way more people who exercise too much than people that being infrequent isn't good either. You know, you need to find your sweet spot. It's uh, 
exercising too much, eating too little, and not sleeping. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, so, it's a bad combination. Really, really, we could do several talks about the subject. It's a big subject, but it's it's uh, and if you have specific questions, just ask us. But yeah, more, more isn't better. And if you have a really good specific question, we might even make it a video. So, like, we'll do that for you. All right. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, have a great and blessed weekend. We'll talk to you later. Bye.